A lot of us have been guilty of making decisions in which God was not even a consideration to begin with. And what we do a lot of times is when that happens is when everything's falling out, the bottom falls out, we're crying out, God, why? I have done that myself. And something that the Lord revealed to me eventually was that, listen, you didn't have me in this to begin with. And a lot of times we want God to be, you know, top flight security. Just clean it up, Lord. Mm. We have to realize that he is a, the God of the skies, the moons, the stars, the galaxy, our planet. He's the God of everything. It is by his existence that we are breathing. It is by his very existence that the plants are able and, and trees are able to give us the carbon dioxide and the exchange of oxygen with us and them. It is by him that we exist. It's by him that we smell our sight. Our mobility is all in him. We are serving a mighty God. And really because our minds are so limited, we really can't wrap our minds around it. And it's only by his revelations that we can realize who he is. But with that being said, you know, a lot of times we want to kind of humanize God and bring him down to our level and like he's our buddy and not realizing his sovereignty. So with that being said, a lot of times we have made decisions that God had nothing to do with. Some of you had married people that God never told you to marry. You didn't consider it. You didn't ask this man, this woman looks good on paper and you just made that decision to marry him or to be in a relationship with them. And what happens? Well, hell breaks loose, right? And now we're going, God, why? And you're praying and you're mad at God. Well, no, you see, these are decisions that you made. Sometimes you're going through the obstacle, the obstacle course with someone that you're in a relationship with or married to and you're thinking you're mad at God or you're questioning God or you want God to come in and do something after you've gotten into it. Been there, done that myself, okay? Even if this person is for you, sometimes the timing is not right. And sometimes they are just not for you at all. And you wanted them anyway. So now you're going through the obstacle course with them. You're going through the ringer with them. You're going through all kinds of stuff with them, right? And as I said before, if this is a person that you're supposed to be with, but not at that time, you see, you wanted them before God said it was time for you to be with them. And so you did those things and you got with them. And you're going through the obstacle course that they were supposed to go through on their own. And while he changes them, while he changes them, they were, you were never meant to go through that obstacle course with them, but you end up going through it with them, getting muddy, dirty, hurt, trampled because you wanted this man or this woman when God told you no, whether he said, no, they're not for you. Or you did not want to wait until they, he had done the work in them to make them who you're supposed to be with. We do that a lot, right? We've done that in other ways. In just making little everyday decisions in our life. In job decisions. In discussions. In things that things maybe you shouldn't have said. It was the right thing to say. It was the right thing. You came from the right place. But it was the wrong time. Or there's certain things you're not supposed to say and you said it anyway because of what you wanted to, how you want to make this person feel. And so then you're in a world of hurt, right? So going ahead of God is always going to be to our own detriment. Going ahead of him in everything. You want to move ahead of him. You want to, you want to help him out a little bit. You know, Lord, let me, let me show you, let me show you something. All right. We want to do those things because of our own impatience. I always give this analogy. It's like when you go, there's a cake that's baking. It smells so good. You see what's on the box and everything. Oh, this is what's going to look like. But you keep opening the oven. And so what's going to happen? The middle is going to cave in. And guess what? Sometimes you take it out too early. It's all soupy in the middle. It tastes good, but it, you're not enjoying it the way that you truly can. Had you just let it thoroughly baked through and then you still got to let it cool because if you try to cut it if you try to put icing on it it's going to melt you still need to wait and a lot of times people don't want to wait 
They want to go ahead of God. They want to do certain things ahead of God. They want to take job opportunities that they were not supposed to take. This is not where you're supposed to be. This is not the job that I have for you. This is not the house that you're supposed to live in. This is not the time for this particular thing. The hardest thing for a lot of people, and sometimes even myself, waiting. There's a lot of things that I feel like right now I should I want to do this. I should make this move right now. You know, being newly retired, I've been retired for, let me see, uh, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. So nine months I've been retired. And there's certain things naturally as a retiree that you kind of feel like, all right, I want to make these moves. And all that God has said to me is to be still. Even relocation, that's something that I felt like, hey, all right, time to move. God's like, wait. <laughs> But what I like is that he says, wait. So wait means I'm going to move eventually. So I'm going to get the desires of my heart. I know where I want to go. You know, I know where I want to be. I know what I want to do. But God tells me to wait. So guys, we have to be okay with that. Waiting. Why? Why do I have to wait? You know, when you're crossing the street with your child, if you have a little child, a niece, a nephew, you know what? Even if you're crossing the street or you're in a park or if you're in a supermarket you know what they're not aware of the cards they're not aware that listen once you get to the end of the aisle you need to slow down and see if anyone's coming to your left or your right mm -mm. they just they just want to go and see that's the thing a lot of times when god is telling you to wait it's because maybe he sees something well now maybe he does see something this is why don't take this job right now wait a second don't move just yet. Don't move into that house just yet. Don't buy that car. Don't make that investment. Wait. Don't marry this man. Don't marry this woman. Wait. Break up this relationship. <gasps> That's the tough one, right? When God tells you leave that person alone, you be like, right? And But later on, you're like, God, why? But the thing is, sometimes God sees something. He sees everything. He sees well into the future. So you and I are looking at right now and, oh, oh I want this person or this car looks so good. Lord, why? You know, my car. And, oh, I want this house, Lord. And it's a great opportunity. And, you know, people are saying, this is never going to come again. Never trust anything that tells you, you ain't never going to get this opportunity. Yes, I will. <laughs> I got it. I get it again. You understand that? So... The thing is, guys, I'm telling you that God sees stuff that's coming. He sees something that you don't see. He sees something in that man or that woman that you're wanting to be with, that you want to marry. He sees something in them that that person may not have given up to him, that they may be hiding from you. And he sees something later on. See, sometimes when you go ahead and get in that relationship, let's say in some play, in some situations where there was a fatality, God saw that. And before it happened, he was saying, no, 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 no. And even threw some things in there, threw some marbles out or pulled some covers back so that person could see what this individual is like. And they just keep going. He's trying to prevent them. He's giving some detours and, and keep opening doors in the sense of showing you, showing you this is wrong. This person is wrong for you. This situation is wrong. This job is wrong. This individual, this business partner is not it. And you keep going. But let's say for the sake of the story, the fatality that happens, God was showing you all along and even trying to prevent you. How does God speak to you? Not necessarily audible voice out of heaven. Don't do it. But your brother, your mother, your father, your family, your friends, him speaking in your spirit, discoveries, you see it and you keep going and keep going. But guess what? You're looking at everybody get jealous. They don't want me to be with this person. But guess what? God sees that there's going to be a moment where this man or this woman is going to pull a gun on you and take your life. He's trying to keep you from it. But you keep pushing and finally you meet this thing, right? The fatalities. It's never a surprise. Well, why didn't God just stop it? Because he gave you choice. Well, why did he give you choice? That's why you and I are not God. Because we will be totalitarians. We'll, we'll be putting uh, buttons in the back of people's backs so we can push, unplug them, all of that, right? Wait on God. 
wait. And while you're waiting, don't just wait, twiddling your fingers. Keep yourself occupied with the things of God. Even if it's just spending time with him, there's always something you can do to be a blessing. And when he moves you, suddenly you're, you're thinking, oh, I've been waiting so long. This is taking so long. Mm -mm. No, God's redeeming your time. As you obey him, he's redeeming it. You're looking at years, how long you've been waiting, but these things are non-existent to God. And suddenly... It'll be there as suddenly as this year has gone. Suddenly your blessings and your overflow, it will overtake you, the blessings of God. So wait on him, obey him, listen, stop blaming him for your own mess ups. All right. He's not, you know, no common Joe down a road. He's God. You choose to disobey him, then deal with the consequences. But pray, pray always and ask him to help you because we really cannot do it on our own means. We can't. All right, guys, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Bye.